Who put my life on the bench? Cheers. Actually, a horrible, horrible club that I was taken to with people from work, which I'm sure you've all had to experience. Um, yeah, I actually wrote most of this in the, in the toilets of the, pub, of the club to actually avoid spending more time in the club. <laughs> cool, so um, um, on my lonesome again, just looking for a friend, just looking for someone to help me protect and defend these ideas that I have about how we should be. These aren't rules for you, but guidelines for me to be a better someone. A better someone, not a no one. And to discover how I big up my passion to be awesome and lift my head up, up above the crowd and scream to all of you heroes, I'm a nerd and I'm proud. You see, I don't drink. I like to stay home and just read. Pick up a 360 pad and I'm hoarding Nordish meat. Or I'm chasing down a joker with a cow and a cake. This shit is childish to you, but it's how I escape. So then I go out and I try to entertain that I'm not all that different, that I'm kind of the same as all the users and abusers and the whores and the losers of all the many others that society puts above us. And I want to scream as I don't fit in. When something cool happens and I'm like Max for the win and they look at me like what the frail are you saying? That's right, I said frail, fuck the scowls, Sebastian's representing and I saw you. <laughs> and I saw you saw me too. And I'm not going to be tight, you're drunk and I'll do, but it's I want. And this ain't how I want to be and this ain't how I want to meet you. Now the next bit starts in three, two, one. So I sit in my bed. And I write this little tune. It was an S Western a poem looking for you. Don't get me wrong, I would like to get to know you, but you like me a bit of a dick, so I'm not pursue. That's why I set my bed and I write this little tune. It was an S Western a poem looking for you. Don't get me wrong, I would like to get to know you, but you like me a bit of a douche. <laughs> so now I'm balls deep in the shallow conversation, and this is the point where I start to get the impression that anything I say will be met with positive reaction with the hope that it will result in filthy bedroom action. So I get my nerd on and see how far I can take it and see how far in this geek actually can fake it. It being that interest in certain specific things like, did you know Dick Grayson eventually becomes Nightwing? Did you know Ben Jacob Grimm becomes the thing? I'd ask you if you'd watch that VHS from the ring. And despite his losing Winterfell, Rob Stark was still a king. And she just sits with that distant stare, head nods in a grin, but I can tell that she don't care about all of these things that mean everything to me. Sweetheart, I'm not exactly the guy you thought me to be. I'm not the kind of guy that gets off and shoot fucking. And I'm not the kind of guy that's into promiscuous sex. And as soon as I say this word, she gets to step in and I wonder who she will aim for next. So I sit back and I dream I have a snapple. And I make sure the seven gods know that I'm thankful that I got out of here without an STD, but more importantly, without you. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Right, I'm going to do one um, which is kind of based on an argument I had with a girl who I worked with who's massively, massively religious. Um, I'm not anti-religion, I'm anti-people being, people being dicks with religion, so believe in what you want to believe in, just don't be massive, massive better with it. Um, so it's about the age of 20 when I was pondering the Holy Trinity and it all seemed a little ridiculous to me, the thought of one holy entity, and as the years went along, this girl came along from across the pond with a belief system that was all kinds of wrong. She said, you know what? For an atheist, you're not what I expect. I said, funny, for an idiot, you're exactly what I expect. You lack common decency at every single step and anything you don't agree with, you simply won't respect. You told me that all gays are evil and that Colbert is the devil. <laughs> that Obama is a Muslim and that there's one God, not several. That you came from a rig just like every woman did. They teach this shit to little kids. I find it fucking baffling. Now, I'm not calling you an idiot because you found religion. I just kind of feel sorry for you because it clearly wasn't your decision. Your parents have laid the foundation years of strategic plantation that homosexuality is the groundwork of Satan. So, go cry me some holy water. <laughs> and then come back and regurgitate the nonsense that your parents taught you. And don't even begin to listen to my opinion. Your truth may be your truth, but it isn't exactly what I'm feeling. Now, if you want to believe in a higher power, the last thing I'm going to do is look down on you. I'm happy that you found whatever it is that helps you to get through the day-to-day -day show where life can truly be tough. So whatever keeps you sane is surely enough, right? No, it's not enough for some of these fucking people. You've got to stamp your feet and make the loudest noise and people know that the point is valid line cover up molestation of young girls and boys and have the audacity to rule over who can get married and don't even begin with it's God's word, okay? Here's the deal. You go find a picture of God and I'll go find a picture of Batman. 
<laughs> whichever, one wants, whichever one of us gets back to this exact point first wins the argument. And you know, that's easier for me, like I'm a fucking ass hat, because I find it more likely that nightly vigilante fights crime as a bat instead of believing in your six days of creation and all that. And I can almost hear a pop as air enters the vacuum that your body mass occupied only a nanosecond earlier, before I took the time to remind you that your religion is a redo of a religion that's a redo of a religion that's a redo of a... I can repeat myself for hours. If that's what you really want me to do, if that's what I need to do to get through, I'll fucking scream into the turn blue so I stroke on my beard and stare off into the distance and wonder if history would ever stoop to acknowledge your existence. Or would you fade away, you know, memories of you would stay, or on this world would you leave a permanent stain? But I guess what I'm trying to say at the end of the day is please, please don't have children. <laughs> Cheers. So um, we've got this cat named Kitty, and she doesn't care too much for me, even though I talk to her in Dothraki and do all the things she needs to do to try and keep her healthy. I get eats and I buy her treats. And I don't get mad when she shits all over my sheets. And when she tries to kill me by tripping up my feet, I'm still like, no, oh, you're so sweet. And she looks at me like, who the fuck are you? Don't you fucking look at me, where the fuck is my food? Goes to the fridge, grab the house, get the apple to mouth, and fuck you, I'm out. I'm gonna go and hunt this mouse. And she kind of looks like Tufus from How to Train Your Dragon, with sad eyes that hide in a little ball of fluff. But she'll rip the shit out of your posts if you don't pay her enough attention. Just like POS, she'll be like, fuck your stuff. But <laughs> I still do love that little key, even though she clearly prefers my housemates to me. And although I never invite her to one of my cat parties, at least she ain't a fucking dog. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm going to start with the uh, next up of Open My Stuff. Um, this one is about, like, I've got some well, well awesome friends. Like, I know every person thinks that their friendship group is the best friendship group, but yours ain't. Mine is. <laughs> Sorry. Like, your friendship group's wicked, I'm sure you've got great in jokes and all that kind of shit that you want. Cool. <laughs> um, so, um, my friends look out for me like family. Every single one of them means so much to me. When darkness is the only thing that I can see, they remind me that life gets better eventually. Then we sit and drink damn fine cups of tea. And we sit and watch episodes of Rick and Morty. Then we sit and chat shit for a bit and then for a bit more because that's what true friends are for. Now, my friends look out for me like family. It's that old school London hardcore mentality. If you fall down, we'll bring you back to your feet. Without doubt, you must do the same for me because friends are there to help you get started, to give you a push on your way. Friends are there to turn you around and put your feet on the ground for a brand new day because my friends look so much better than yours. We read Batman comics and we fight to hardcore and we bop to hip hop and we dance to cheesy pop and we watch bad movies just so we can not just a bunch of geeks from the old school for reading comics and having beers were cool. And we may not wear any more, but we're still representing help po. And as far as the fake friends go, I'm fucking done with your hassles. I'm sick of all the lying and the conspiring and all the bullshit tales that I have to unravel. So feel free to take the nonsense and go and have a little choke on them. I'll be here stroking my beard listening to the new B. Dolan album. So fuck those fucking fuckholes. I've got better friends I've got to look out for. Be it Hedge Brooms, London Crew, TTBT, we stole that from Doomtree. Be it 30 years strong or a new acquisition. My friends are there, even if I don't care. But my friends are there for me. Cheers. So, um, there's a lot of you who know me and stuff. I'm really into like Batman and stuff. There's people that have been to like a lot of my like Sydney performance stuff. They know I'm quite nerdy about it. But well, I fucking hate the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Um, oh! So, oh, 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 Nolan. Please don't get me wrong, son. I love the shit out of the prestige, momentum, and inception. 
I think we're also director and a pretty decent storyteller, but to be honest with you, I have some problems with portrayal of Gotham's Dark Protector. You see, I remember first hearing the announcement, back then shit was way more stagnant. We'd already had some movies about some mutants, but there was hardly a geek sheet movement. And my bad heart had been broken many years earlier by a hugely incompetent director. Fuck bat nipples, fuck Barbara Wilson, Batman and Robin and Batman forever. This time we get scared Ray Shadow, and that dude from American Psycho. And it'll be too early for Robin, but I'm sure that he's coming, maybe even as Nightwing, and that's cool, yo. And I heard it's gonna be loosely based on year one, which is wicked, because I'm a massive fan of Lieutenant Gordon. I'm gonna watch him walk up into Gotham, take down all the police corruption, watch him expose all over there, watch as they promote his ass to Captain. And trust me, I'm very excited about that ever faithful night. The Marcus Zorro and Park Row and the birth of Dark Knights. So now about 10 minutes in to Batman Begins and the tone is all but win and I'm starting to think, why am I watching Liam Neeson taking my second favourite villain, removing all the feeling that comes with him? But I guess that's just my opinion. And this League of Shadows will call it massively underused on it. But at least we get a redo in season two of Arrow. So what we've got now is a movie full of incoherent fight scenes and a vengeance that seems to mean nothing. And a movie so full of plot holes, it's so far removed from enticing. Flashbacks within flashbacks and just this piece of shit car coming black and that fucking voice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's got to sound like that. And now we've got a bat who's afraid of his namesake, who let King Joffrey just up and walk away. <laughs> It's supposed to be all realistic and gritty, but the shitty reality is, is just well ugly. And it's not just the acting and the directing that's lacking, it's the fact that your Batman is boring. <laughs> and I just think that for a wicked character, you've made a well dull story. But I watched all three movies, some have had their positive moments. Heath Ledger absolutely killed it as the Joker, as did Michael Caine as Alfred. Cillian Murphy was a wicked scarecrow and Anne Hathaway is probably my favourite live action rendition version of Catwoman, but I do get that it's just an adaptation and hardly something that's made for my attention. I'm one of those old school Batman nerds who's far more into the comics and various animations. I just think that we just fucked it up a little bit. That's all. Oh yeah, fuck Bane and his stupid zippy sounding fucking voice. And fuck that moment in the last one where Batman and Catwoman are on the roof chatting and then Catwoman fucks off and Batman's still using that stupid fucking voice. It makes me so fucking frustrated. Cheers. <laughs> start with the open mic stuff. Um, is there anyone here that wants to do open mic that hasn't signed up or anything yet? Anyone? Bueller? No? Okay, cool. Um, in that case, we're just going to run straight through and do the open mic stuff and then we'll have a break and then we'll do the main. That's awesome. Performance. Wicked. Okay, so I'm going to start off the first one. Um, it's a bit of a plug poem, to be honest with you. We've got, um, we've got a Star Wars poetry night coming up on May the 4th, right? That's Star Wars time. Um, this is the first one that I've written for it. Um, it's about a stormtrooper after the Death Star's exploded and, and trying to get over all the horrible shit to see. Cool, um, so, um, and that was it. The Death Star was destroyed and I was suddenly unemployed, left out in the void of the real world. With all the work is done by joys, life wasn't like this before I was deployed because they told me that the Empire needed me. I had to prepare to die if I wanted to be free. There was rebel scum all over the galaxy, and by the time it is over, I'll even have a college degree. Plus, a nice plot of land on Dantui where I can chill and expand on my family. But life doesn't always pan out the way that we do see. Now I sleep on the streets with blisters occupying my feet. You see, war would be glorious. At least that's what they told all of us. Not prepared for all of the horrors that will be presented before us. Women and children demoralised, innocent farmers burned the night. There's a reason most of us didn't shoot straight. We just didn't want to end any more lives. I'm a good person. But what makes you do terrible things? Innocence can turn to violence when you survive by any means. Creating orphans and creating widows like it's going out of fashion. Killing an indiscriminate leader using the excuse we'll simply follow the direction which we were. But trust that they won't sleep in any easier. So the alcohol could lie that not us, but the psychological damage runs much deeper. So now, I see my best friends burned alive, fighting for a war that's yours and not mine. 
We sat side by side, but we thought it was right. If only we knew how that empire would lie. So now I'm stranded on my side, Lee. Not sure what happened to my fallen brothers. I heard that some of them managed to flee and regroup it in the outer room sectors. To continue this bullshit war, I'm not even sure what they're fighting for. Just a bunch of soldiers without a cause while I sit here and try to ignore the looks on people's faces as they quickly pass me by. They probably just think I'm a down and out who's given up on life. Maybe they're right. Even if they do what I've been through, they wouldn't be happy with the side that I did fight. The dark side, not the light. I wonder if I'll even see any sleep tonight. Cheers. Thank you, Mark. Um, okay, this is like an old one. If you've been to Spoken in London, you've grown out, so we do this. I'm sorry. Um, so, when I tell you that I'm caution on you, it doesn't take a coop like dream to read the truth between these lines. No dwarfs, no giants, no mysterious red curtains. I've searched for truthiness, and the truth is a certain. The truth is that I kind of fancy you a lot. The truth is, is that I oddly miss you a lot. The truth is you make me want to be a better person. That's something that's never happened to me before. The truth is you make me want to drive so I can simply be with you anytime you need me to. The truth is, is that I gave up smoking weed so I could fully remember every single moment you spoke in my direction. So my civilized memory could remember every single word you spoke to me. But the real truth is, is that I want you to be happy. And not the kind of happy words me that you've got to be happy with, but real happiness. And to take the truth at best and put to the test and bubble with the rest, I'm probably not what you're looking for. But don't worry, I'm not going to get all Dr. Harley and Quinzel on you. Still can change my ways, isn't exactly my jam or something I thought I'd put even my screw. And whereas I do want you to love me, I kind of want you to love me for me, not some paid up version of you that you think I approve of. And I tell you, we need to kiss one time. Genuine fucking butterfly, son. I thought you'd get that look that they give in the movies. You know the one. The one where the girl looks up and then crosses lock and she smiles and they kiss and the whole fucking world rocks and the whole world can fall down around you in that moment. And in that moment, love is everything. And in that moment, they are everything. But for me, that moment was just a fabrication of mine, something I've made up and distorted into my undistorted mind. And whereas I hate to sound cliched, but that moment of being lost in your eyes was hands down the greatest moment of my life. Well, set the mic in my pattern, seeing Mr. Bungle reading my first Joker comic. <laughs> so, fourth. Fourth happiest moment of my life. <laughs> but still, four's pretty high. Right? Cheers. saying this is my set list and then I wrote write three poems and then make two ones. <laughs> so um, I haven't really come up with a plan. So I'm going to start with one that is about, because tomorrow is May the 4th, it's Star Wars Day. So I'm going to do one about a stormtrooper after the Death Star was exploded. Um, so that was it. The Death Star was destroyed and I was suddenly unemployed, left out in the void of the real world. All the real work is done by droids. Life wasn't like this before I was deployed because they told me that the Empire needed me. I had to prepare to die if I wanted to be free. There is rebel scum all over the galaxy and by the time this is over I'll even have a college degree plus a nice plot of land on Dantui where I can chill and expand on my family. But life doesn't always pan out the way that we do see to now asleep on the streets of places occupying my feet, you see. War would be glorious, at least that's what they told all of us, not prepared for all of the horrors that will be presented before us. Women and children demoralised Innocent farmers burned alive. There's a reason most of us didn't shoot straight. We just didn't want to end any more lives. I'm a good person, but war makes you do terrible things. Innocence can turn to violence when you survive it by any means. Creating widows and creating orphans like it's going out of fashion. Killing indiscriminately and using the excuse for simply following the direction which we were. But trust that don't make the sleeping any easier. That alcohol can bring the numbness with the psychological damage one spots deeper. I see my best friends cut down in their prime. 
fighting for a war that's yours and not mine. We stood side by side fighting for what we thought was right. If only we knew how the empire had lights. So now I'm stranded on Moss Eisley. Not even sure what happened to my fallen brothers. I heard that some of them managed to flee and regroup into the outer rim sectors. Trying to continue this bullshit war, not even sure what it is they're trying to fight for. Just a bunch of soldiers without a cause when I sit here and try to ignore the looks on people's faces as they slowly pass me by. They probably just think I'm a down and out who's given up on life. Maybe they're right. Even if they knew what I'd been through, they wouldn't be happy with the side that I did fight, the dark side, and not the light. I wonder if I'll even see any sleep tonight. That's the side was part of it. So um, I'm really like into hip hop and stuff, um, but there's so much bad hip hop out there, it just makes me fucking cringe. So um, there's so much like good ethical and social concepts hip hop out there. So if you want to know about any, come and ask me. So this is my poem about that. So um, the idea that hip hop is a slowly dying art form is a perfectly acceptable opinion when you're only taking into consideration 80% of what's in the mainstream with so many responsible lessons being fed to our younger generations. And it breaks my heart when I start to realise that those lessons were there from the very start. You see. My early teens can be pretty much summed up with these five things. Hip hop, hardcore, DC Comics, my pattern Twin Peaks, and let's be honest, at the age of 35, not much has really changed in my life. Now, to me, hip hop and hardcore were always interchangeable, ethical and political, with a message to rise above it all. But the homophobia, the racism, the misogyny run so deep, you just read between the lines that our heroes want to speak. Growing up listening to Dre and the D.O.W.G. I never thought saying bitch was meant to be the rockatory. I just wanted to be cool like everyone into my box in my school. I wore my honest hoodie with pride. Wu-Tang hat tilted to one side. And beside, it's not like this music it was anything that I could relate to. I had no need for an AK, never needed to cap no fools. Because life's pretty mundane in the WGC. It's kind of lame being B-R-I-D-G-E. You see, small town kids feel the need to feel bigger. So they start acting tough and using the word inappropriate words. <laughs> In appropriate terms of phrase, so many homophobic slurs, it's like it's a crime to be gay, which is obviously not okay. So then what I did was start branching out a little bit and finding some music that actually spoke to me, like most Beth Jurassic 5, Dell Guild, Public Enemy. Still coming from streets that I never walked, but endorsing an ethic that I could support hip hop with a conscious thought, listening to every single word that KRS One taught. I found wisdom in his lyricism, I couldn't help but sit and listen. So every lesson that he was teaching, the words he was preaching, soon became my religion. So now it's, what, 2016? And you want to tell me that hip hop needs to get in the fucking sea. But before you make that opinion for yourself, I suggest you go listen to some Doom Tree, Brother Ali and Talib Kweli. Atmosphere, idea, Ron the Jewels, Scrooge's Pips, Sage Francis, B. Dolan, the Mortal Technique, Sol Williams, they remind us that hip hop is art. It's a way for us to voice our opinion. Hip hop is a way for us to rage against the system, not a platform for racism, violence, and sexism. Hip hop should be poetry and not your misogyny. So if you want to ask me who needs to get in the fucking sea, well, it's Drake, obviously. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> So um, I'm gonna do like an older one now. It's about like a, a relationship breaking up. Not my relationship. I wrote these three poems about certain friends of mine and their breakups. And I wasn't gonna do this one tonight, but the person who was originally coming isn't going, and this poem's about them. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, she said, "I love you." No, you don't. You thought. If you're honest with yourself, what you really mean to say is I'm used to occupying the same space as you. I'm used to the day-to-day -day mundane that we continue to pursue. I'm used to all of these things that a relationship brings, but I think these feelings are continuing to depart from this heart, and I'm sure that from the very start, they're not as penetrating as I was originally led to believe. He's sure she wants to leave, to pack her shit up and flee. He thinks, to a place that's far more appealing for her to be, which is pretty sure that anywhere than right here with me. So he sits and looks at her and tries to work out when that moment of look of love in her eyes turned not to despise, but rather to indifference, to unwanting, to just, just 
nothing. Just cold. And as he regret, as he reflects, he said, regret or just general disinterest in this relationship, and he was sure he did his best, and he thought if he talked through their walk, they could walk through this discord and put one more breath into this dying mess that he would still confess was hands down the best and the greatest love that he would ever accomplish. And they say what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. When your heart's been consistently torn out, the repair time can be longer. And the resulting shots may not be quite so stable, you may not be quite so able to withstand another onslaught. So at this point he realises that about two and a half minutes in real time have gone by and she's still looking at him waiting for his reply. Yeah, I love you too. Not that it fucking matters to you. He thought to himself. Cheers. <laughs> Um, I'm going to do a poem now, which I haven't done live before. It's about a friend of mine who's in the room at the moment. Um, <laughs> we walk this life alone, and hold close to those who feel like home. And even if we're wrong, in that moment at least we felt like we belong. But the significance is relative. And when I take my final breath, and that final beat beats in my chest, I'm just glad I got to call you my friend. I see the wonder of the vision of this world, and it's something I wish that I knew. But my cynical point of view keeps me cold, and I'm told by you that we're all here for different reasons. Everyone's battling their own demons to kill their aggression with compassion and love, no fronts, just hugs, and occasional cups of tea. And on that day, we'll pave our way to a better humanity. You see, the sea we're all swimming in can be suffocating, and the stream won't be uncertain, but the fuck are we gonna give up trying? Because we ain't dying in last place. We're here to take our glory. Refusing <coughs> to be a footnote in somebody else's story. And as we proceed through this life without guidelines, I know you start to feel like I'm just here to remind that you ain't isolated from the world, even though it feels like that sometimes. Don't even trip, dog, I've got your back, you're on your side. Because my life without you would be like Twin Peaks without coffee, Harley without Chewy, Rick without Morty, <laughs> Joker without Harley, Colbert with a hard tea, hip hop without the poetry. Basically, I love the shit out of you. And I think you're perfect the way that you are. And every single little bit of minor damage just adds brightness to your style. I'm saying that to you as your friend, as your family, as a poet, as a shoot, as your teacher, as your student, as a shoulder to cry on if you ever need it. So if you ever need anything, I mean anything at all, I'm here for you. All you've got to do is ask, man. We walk this life alone and hold close to those who feel like home. And sometimes we ain't wrong, we find the people where we belong. Because significance is everything. And when I take my final breath, and that final beat beats in my chest, you're right, I guess. <laughs> Cheers. <Yeah. laughs> well, I'm going to do two more. Um, and this is the first one. So um, it's about a girl that I was kind of crushing on at work a while ago. And you know you get like impossible crushes that you think are like, well, I can't do that. And it's ridiculous because we're all also on the show. Come on, listen. Um, so this is, this is about that. So, and then my down at my desk. And just like usual, you will pass. You give me a smile, I give you a joke, you give me a sympathetic laugh. That I keep close to my heart, where low confidence is right. Instantly, you're my Khaleesi, you'd be the moon of my life. Now, that last rhyme was lazy, and I'm sorry it was obvious. But I feel that those words were the best words to try and get my point across. You see, she'll send me an email from across the room. Hey darling, how was your evening? What did you get up to? And it makes my day just to think she thought of me before logging on or signing in or making a coffee. So I try and try and be funny, try and be awesome, try and play it cool, but every word that I write just sounds like, oh, well, fancy you. <laughs> Which would be cool if I didn't, but I do, so obviously it's not. I'm so fucking obvious, I'm like Shutter Ryan's plot. And I'm so transparent that you can call me Griffin, I'm pretty fucking obvious, I guess is what I'm saying. But now, every now and then, I like to fool myself again. That the smile that you just said was meant for more than just a friend, and I'd like to just pretend, but now it's the weekend, so I'll see you again on Monday. And now, it's Monday again. I get that stupid grin. I didn't see your face again and that's for the win because the weekend has been such a drawn out thing getting baits with my friends with this mundane never end, you see. I like your face and I think you're really pretty. You stimulate my mind and you make me a little giddy and you make me a little happy and you make me act a fool and you make me want to slap me for acting like said fool for the things that I do when I'm around you. Let me give an example if you were Princess Toad's stall and you were captured by bowels where I come running and I'd save over mushroom hills, underwater levels, and deepest, darkest caves. Finding Cooper Troopers, Boos and Goopers, won't stop until the end, jumping straight from worlds one, three, then eight, and walk whistle is my fence. So I'm at the final level, and your face is in my sight. 
But before the heroic kiss comes the main boss fight. Now the main boss is easy, the real life can be. Just jump on his head three times and you're on to victory. But real life is hard on, and I wish that I knew. All the things the same thing to try and impress you, and it's hard to talk to you about a CPU. So I'll see you again on Monday. Because it's placed in my heart and the shape of each size. I can't say it's sort of start by even I can't say I'm surprised that I now see you this way. And I hope you'll understand that at night throughout the day I kind of just want to hold your hand. And I know that it's unlikely that you like me too. I'm a bit of a nerd, but opposites do attract. It's a fact and all of that. So I stare at my feet and retract. Back to the fact that I'm a nerd and that with a Johnny Cockney's hat and an anti-social cat spurt and ice and fire facts. Wishing that I was the bat. So to my nerd cave, I'll go back. Cheers. Um, so I'm going to do another one. I might fuck it up, which is why I've left it to last, because then I can just cut it off the YouTube video and nobody knows that I've fucked it up. So, that's mm -hmm. um, so it starts off by going. So we keep going day to day, pay to pay, as if we be knowing that we've got an outcome to be proud of and not just this one that we have actually seen for ourselves, so here we are putting our dreams upon a shelf. And our dreams started to fade the moment we started to get paid and we realised that all of the hours that we laid don't provide enough coin for the things that we enjoy. So we compromise and let things slide even though it kills us on the inside. And as we strive to survive in this life, we realise that the lies we seem to arrive on both sides of the argument. And the need yet lack of common sense from our government. The ones who are meant to protect our nets instead of laughing at the staffing while they collect their paychecks, you see. For them it's a simple request, let your mind rest and acquiesce. Eat, sleep, work every day for minimum wage, get your council tax paid till you eventually meet your grave. And let your dreams fade away, and let the media guide you away. Lap up everything they say, but it's a cage, it's a bane, they straight from the path that for you they did lay. A path to a low self-opinion, and a path to a lack of ambition. Thanks to bullshit advertising, but the product that they're selling because it will definitely make you far more enticing. But we don't need your things. No matter the happiness and content feelings that you claim that they bring, and if they hear one more mass marketing company telling me how to be happy, I'm likely to fucking slap and go on William Foster crazy. Because I'm leaving with my friends, I'm not leaving with my family, I need Batman comics and a nice cup of tea. I need that company of my friends who are special to me so you can sit and watch Rick and Morty or what listen to Doom Tree. We don't do these things because of your influence. We do these things because we fucking kill it. And we do these things because they make us happy, and my mass marketing slogan is going to influence me. So, so fuck your advertising. Because I can beat that feeling. And it's called a cleaner living, and that shit is the real thing. Because I won't pump your sugar water into my system, and I won't eat your chocolate if it's got blood in the ingredients. And I won't wear your sportswear if your train ain't too fair. And though I could not shit to care about the shiny things while I'm with them, I care more about the children, the men and the women who are being forced to work under these unethical conditions and to all the women who have cried and all the fathers who have died and to all the babies who didn't survive thanks to the seeds of suicide and the various pesticides we apologise we just wanted some strawberries out of season well tasty bananas with minimal discoloration and I know you're thinking that all of this pain and suffering isn't a good enough reason is it? No. Never has been, never will be. Cheers. That's me, Dolph. So, Lucy. Um, I wasn't going to do it, but my favourite nurse just turned up, so I got to a Star Wars one for her. <laughs> um, it's about the a stormtrooper after the Death Star's exploded and trying to get back into society. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. The Death Star was destroyed and I was suddenly unemployed, left out in the void of the real world. And what the real work is done by droids. Life wasn't like this before I was deployed because they told me that the Empire needed me. I had to prepare to die if I wanted to be free. There is rebel scum all over the galaxy, and by the time this is over, I don't even have a college degree. Plus, a nice plot of land on Dantui, <laughs> where I can chill and expand on my family. But life doesn't was pan out the way that we do see. Now I sleep on the streets of blisters occupy my feet. You see, war would be glorious. At least that's what they told all of us. Not prepared for all of the horrors that will be presented before us. So when the children demoralised, innocent farmers burned alive. There's a reason most of us didn't shoot straight. We just didn't want to end any more lives. I'm a good person. But war makes you do terrible things. Innocence can turn to violence when you're surviving by any means. Creating widows and creating orphans like it's going out of fashion. 
killing indiscriminately, then using the excuse we're simply following direction, which we were. But trust that don't make the sleeping any easier. The alcohol can bring the numbness, the psychological damage runs much deeper. I see my best friends cut down in their prime, fighting for a war that's yours and not mine. We stood side by side, fighting for what we thought was right. If only we knew how the empire had died. So now I'm stranded on my size lead. Not even sure what happened to my fallen brothers. I heard that some of them managed to flee and regroup into the outer rim sectors. Trying to continue this bullshit war, not even sure what it is they're fighting for. Just a bunch of soldiers without a cause while I sit here and try to ignore the looks on people's faces as they slowly pass me by. They probably think I'm just a down and out who's given up on life. Who knows? Maybe they're right. Even if they knew what I'd been through, they would be happy with the side that I did fight, the dark side and not the light. I wonder if I'll even see any sleep tonight. Cheers, that's the song. Right, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not too bothered. So everyone go buy drinks. <laughs>Did you say fuck it to today? Did you say fuck it to the emotional pain, delusional chains that keep this mainframe riddled with...